Hi there. Welcome to the fourth problem in the Problem Corner playlist in the Genesis YouTube channel. Today, we will not discuss a problem, but rather we will revisit our old friend, the projectile, and learn how to view this in a unique manner. This method is a powerful visualization to learn, and so watch this video fully to the end. So our problem statement is a small stone is thrown from the ground with a velocity u vector making an angle theta with the horizontal. Acceleration due to gravity is g vector directed downwards. Find the time of flight, height and range of this projectile. I am pretty sure that you know how to arrive at this. If you don't know how to derive these parameters or what these parameters are, I suggest that you stop the video and read any standard physics textbook and then come back. Those who do know how to do this, watch till the end and you will get a unique insight into projectiles that you haven't seen before. So without further ado, let's start. Taking the instant of projection as t is equal to zero and origin at the projection point, we have the initial position vector r0 is equal to zero. As the motion is uniformly accelerated with acceleration g vector directed downwards, we use the equation delta r is equal to u vector delta t plus half a vector delta t square. Here, delta r vector is the displacement and delta t is the time interval. So, delta r is nothing but final position minus initial position, so r vector minus zero, where r vector is the position of the stone at an instant t. And delta t becomes t minus zero, so this equation boils down to r vector is equal to u vector t plus half g vector t square. Now, look at this expression carefully. This is the vector addition of two vectors, u vector into t and half g vector into t square and the vector addition of these two vectors gives the vector r vector can we draw a vector triangle for this yes we can this is u vector into t at an angle theta from the horizontal this is half g vector t square which will point vertically down and closing this vector triangle this is r vector you can physically think of this as follows u vector into t is the displacement of the stone only due to inertia that is its velocity u vector half g vector t square is the displacement of the stone only due to the gravitational acceleration g vector and the net displacement r vector of the stone from its projection point is the vector sum of these two displacements now as the stone moves in its parabolic path the vector triangle changes as follows now look at the final vector triangle when the displacement is r vector whose magnitude is the range and the time is capital T which is the time of flight. Now in this triangle write sin theta. Sin theta is perpendicular by hypotenuse and that gives you ut by half gt square simplify and in one line you will get t is equal to 2u sin theta by g that is the time of flight. Now write cos theta. Cos theta will be base by hypotenuse and so ut by r. So r is u cos theta t and substitute the value of t here and write 2 sin theta cos theta as sin 2 theta and you get the standard formula for range r is equal to u square sin 2 theta by g. Also, you should be able to see that by writing tan theta we will get a useful relation r tan theta is equal to half gt square. I trust you can do this one yourself and at the end, I'll talk about why this relation is important. Now, I will make one assumption here that the particle reaches its maximum height at half the time. That is at t is equal to capital T by 2. How would the vector triangle look like? The gravitational displacement will be half g t by 2 whole square or 1 by 8 g t square. So, now look at this triangle along with the last triangle that will be formed. As this side is half of this side and these triangles are similar, this perpendicular must be half of this one. And so h plus 1 by 8 gt square is half of half gt square which gives us h is equal to 1 by 8 gt square and substituting capital T as 2u sin theta by g, we get h is equal to u square sin square theta by 2g, which gives us the expression for height. In about 5 minutes, we have derived the height, time and range for the projectile. You realize how powerful geometric intuition is. Wherever 
you are able to see the geometry of the situation clearly, you will always hit upon solutions that are elegant in every sense of the word. This small derivation is only one example of that and of the beauty that the equations of physics have in them. Now at the end, let us focus on one more thing that is often grossly overlooked. Now note that in the derivation, we had come across these two relations r tan theta is equal to half gt square and h is equal to 1 by 8 gt square. Now if you eliminate t from these two equations, you will get 4h is equal to r tan theta. Now these three relations themselves can reduce your calculations by half in many small trivial problems. How you ask? Let us consider three problems and see how their answers will become just mental calculations. In all of these, we will take g as 10 meter per second square. First one, what is the height of a projectile thrown from the ground whose time of flight is 2 root 2 second? h is equal to 1 by 8 gt square and so h is 10 meters, done. Second, what is the range of a stone thrown from the ground at an angle of 60 degrees and reaching a maximum height of root 3 meters from the ground? 4h is equal to r tan theta and so h is equal to 4, done. Third one. What is the time of flight of a stone thrown from the ground at 30 degrees and having a range of root 3 meters? r tan theta is equal to half gt square and so t is equal to 1 by root 5 seconds. Done. Do you understand the importance of these three relations? Wherever they can be applied, they cut down the solution by half. We will see applications of these relations in the upcoming videos in the Problem Corner playlist. The methods that we have discussed today are so simple that once you see them, you won't forget it. And it adds to your sense of visualization and understanding of the problem. I hope you have enjoyed this unique solution to this problem. For more such intriguing problems and approaches to problem solving, keep watching the Genesis YouTube channel, especially the Problem Corner playlist. Serious J aspirants may also want to check the Solutions to J 2020 Physics playlist. And if you like the work, like, subscribe and share widely amongst your friends so that maximum students can benefit from this. Till the next problem, stay safe and stay healthy you all.